Yo, the stuff you saw in the thumbnail are two different benchmarks of the exact same code running in React 18 and React 19. And if you're now noticing, well, Josh, there's a pretty big difference in speed, React 19 is hella slow. Well, yeah. Let's take a look at what that problem is. And as you'll see, the story does have a happy ending. Like, dude, not one of, like, good, good ending. Now, React 19 and Suspense, a drama in three acts. And now that this problem is very real, before even getting into this article, let me show you that. So I prepared two deployments. The first one is done in React 18. And when I open this page, pay attention to how fast the data loads. It's gonna be pretty fast in the traditional React, right? This is just a list of open source GitHub repositories for each one we are making a request to the GitHub API. So if we go to the Network tab, and when reloading, you can see for each React, repo listed here on the left hand side we also have one query for the information for that repo like the stars it has and so on right in react 19 this works fundamentally different we still make a request for each repo but here's the difference let's go to react 19 as you'll see this happens sequentially that's a big problem because only now do we have the data after about 7.26 seconds you can see that here pretty small in the right hand side it took forever to do this and we can come to the same conclusion in a kind of lab environment and that's with pay speed insights so let's hit analyze let's do a kind of external performance test for this website nothing local on my machine so the performance is not that bad but when you take a look at the speed index right here it's 14.1 seconds it takes extremely long to render a page that is in and of itself pretty basic in what it does and that's a big problem that was only discovered like a month ago right here first act react 19 release candidate the 25th of april was a great day react announced the react 19 RC, the release candidate, with the most important change being right here, the experimental React compiler, which essentially just does some upgrades to your app, right? There's other changes like use layout effect not erroring and so on. We don't really care about that. The experimental React compiler is the most important change. And this issue was discovered by this guy, by Gabriel, when he said code using suspense with libraries like React Query, but this could be something entirely else, will get waterfalls where loading previously happened in parallel. Because the way that React React Suspense works is like this. No matter how many components right here you have inside of a React Suspense, they all load their data and only when all of them have their data, everything is ready. Only then is the fallback, in this case just a p tag with some dots, replaced by the entire content of React Suspense. So we either show the p tag or the entire data that's in here. And the good thing is all of these fetch their data in parallel. The tan stack table doesn't have to wait for the first repo to get its data. In React 19 that's different and the article is a great read don't get me wrong but i think the most important part is right here that i want to go over with you why is that different in react 19 because the way it works suspense works in react 19 is first this repo finishes its data fetching then this then this then this and so on you get the point right each repo has to wait for the prior one to finish their data fetching resulting in the waterfall that we see right here right this table digital hippo quill next analytics and so on and the result being a super long loading time because this way of fetching data just just doesn't make sense for this use case. We can fetch all in parallel. Why does React 19 not do that? Well, basically as a performance improvement for some situations, continuing to render siblings of a component that has already suspended is not for free and it will block showing the fallback. Let's assume that expensive component takes some time to render this component right here because it has a huge subtree but does not suspend itself. And suspense just means it's telling React, hey, I have some asynchronous data fetching going on. This component does have that, this component doesn't. It's just a big ass component that's weighing down the rendering pass. Now, when React renders this tree, it will see that suspending component suspends, right? It's telling React, hey, I'm fetching some data, so please show the fallback. But before React can even get to this fallback, and I kind of prepared that here, it first needs to render the expensive component, which doesn't add anything, right? We're not even showing the content of this component because at this point, because we have a suspending component, React already knows that we are gonna show the fallback in any case, right? That's the point of suspense, showing a fallback back while this spanning component loads. So basically, we're heavily weighing down the rendering pass of React with this expensive component, even though we already know we're literally going to take the result of this and throw it in the trash can because we're going to show the fallback eventually, right? It doesn't really make sense to render this component and calculate the expensive content that is inside of it. That's all that this article is saying because we have to wait until the expensive component is done rendering. Even more, the render result of expensive component will be thrown away because the fallback has to be displayed, right? This p 
deck will be displayed either way, so why even bother calculating this expensive component? And this article is right, it's pure overhead, we don't really need to do that. And in comes React 19, what's the difference? Of course, if you suspend instantly, that's what React 19 does, you can't see that the siblings will also suspend, so if those siblings were to initiate data fetches, they will now waterfall. So what's initially meant as a performance improvement, because we don't even have to render components that just weigh down or rendering past, what actually ends up happening is something called the waterfall, like the HTML or the bundle in the case of React, for example, right, or initial bundle, and that bundle then tells us what other data we need. For example, it initiates the data fetches from React Query for all the GitHub repo. So repo one would be fetched here, repo two, and so on. And they all, that's the important thing in React 18, right here, they are all fetched at the same time. So what ends up happening is we don't have a waterfall, right? We get our bundle and we immediately know which repos to fetch. In React 19, that's different. It basically looks like this. In the first pass, we get the repo one, then we get the repo two, once repo one is done, and then we get the third one and so on. I think you get the idea, right? It happens like a waterfall and not a pretty waterfall you see on vacation, but a horrible one that weighs down your website and makes it slow as Hell. So are they gonna delay the launch to just fix this issue? Well, the React Query maintainer talked with this guy. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his name, I'm gonna completely butcher it. But this guy basically worked on the React compiler and v19. There is an image right here, well great. And these two talked about the suspense changes and the React compiler. Now what came of that discussion is pretty cool. It's this right here. He ensured me that the React team cares a lot about the community and they likely underestimated how the change influences client-side suspense interactions, which is exactly what we just saw with that waterfall. On the next day, the React team met and decided to hold the release. So yes, they're actually going to delay the release. Good news regarding suspense, just met with some people and well, they basically misjudged how many people rely on this, which is much more than they thought. And now we plan to hold the 19 release until we find a good fix. And they posted this like two or three days ago, which is really nice because it shows the entire React community that the core people are listening, right? They're listening to our problems and this, this is a problem if I've ever seen one, right? And finding a good fix before they actually follow through with the React 19 release. And that's pretty powerful considering they already announced the release and they're now holding back on it. So as it turns out, there might be just a happy ending for this. So what do you think? Do you use React Suspense a lot? Does this affect you or does it not? I'd love to hear from you. And that's it for this video. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Until then, have a good one and bye bye.